Jacob's Encounters with Angels Very few of us on Earth can claim to have seen or had some kind of encounter with angels. Of course, this doesn't mean we have not met angels before. After all, the Bible teaches us that we will meet angels without being aware. Hebrews 13 verse 2 Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. However, there are certain people that have gone beyond entertaining angels unaware to actually having practical experiences with God's angels, and an example is Jacob, the son of Isaac, also known as Israel. The first time Jacob had an unforgettable experience with heaven's mighty host and God's messengers, also known as angels, was when he was fleeing the wrath of his brother. A wrath that was quite justified because he stole his brother's place and deceived their father to pray for him. All the while, he was disguised as Esau, his older brother. Eventually, his brother found out and vowed to kill him for taking his heritage. It was while he was on the run for his life in fear and wondering what else to do about the future that he had his first encounter with angels. Genesis 28 verses 10 to 22 Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. One thing is sure about an encounter with God's living army and the host of heaven. It never leaves you thinking or responding the way you would respond if it was just a normal meeting with another human. This is because angels minister strength and God's words to us. Hebrews 1 verses 13 and 14 To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? The excitement the elation and the hope for the future is usually tangible, just like it was with Jacob. Immediately after this encounter, he took the stone that he had just used as a pillow and set it up as a memorial by anointing it with oil and separating it as God's house, because it was an experience he never wanted to forget in a hurry. He called that place where he saw those angels ascending and descending Bethel. His second encounter is explained in Genesis 31, verses 1 to 13. Laban, Jacob's father-in-law, had cheated him several times and was still intent on doing so when it came to the subject of his wage for the job he had done. However, God's angel appeared to Jacob in a dream to show him how he would come out of this mess with abundance. The angel of God gave him such divine wisdom that ensured that he practically and undeniably had so much more than the man who was determined to cheat him. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, 
and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the fields where his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it was before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I've worked for your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. If he said, the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young. And if he said, the streaked ones will be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked young. So God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. In breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male goats mating with the flock were streaked, speckled, or spotted. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob. I answered, Here I am. And he said, Look up and see that all the male goats mating with the flock are streaked, speckled, or spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. The third time Jacob had an encounter with angels was in Genesis 32 verses 1 to 3. Jacob also went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is the camp of God. So he named that place Mahanaim. The Bible doesn't explain how Jacob knew they were angels or what transpired between them here, but we know that once again he was excited enough to name the place where he encountered them. The fourth time was in Genesis 32, verses 20 to 32, when he was finally about to meet his aggrieved brother after so many years of being on the run. And be sure to say, your servant Jacob is coming behind us, for he thought, I will pacify him with these gifts I am sending on ahead. Later, when I see him, perhaps he will receive me. So Jacob's gifts went on ahead of him, but he himself spent the night in the camp. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. The man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please, tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. There was definitely something life-changing that happened after the meeting that Jacob had with God's angel. This is because, first and foremost, his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. A man that was once known to be a deceiver was having his name changed into the representation of a nation. Another thing that happened during this encounter must have been a new smell of favor because, after he left, he was favored by the very man that had promised to kill him. Genesis chapter 33 Jacob looked up, and there was Esau, coming with his four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? he asked. Jacob answered, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, 
What's the meaning of all these flocks and herds I met? To find favor in your eyes, my lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God, now that you have received me favorably. Please accept the present that was brought to you, for God has been gracious to me and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. Then Esau said, Let us be on our way. I'll accompany you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are tender and that I must care for the ewes and cows that are nursing their young. If they are driven hard just one day, all the animals will die. So let my Lord go on ahead of his servant, while I move along slowly at the pace of the flocks and herds before me and the pace of the children, until I come to my Lord in Seir. Esau said, Then let me leave some of my men with you. But why do that? Jacob asked. Just let me find favor in the eyes of my Lord. So that day Esau started on his way back to Seir. Jacob, however, went to Succoth, where he built a place for himself and made shelters for his livestock. That is why the place is called Succoth. If there is one explanation for Jacob's lifting, wisdom, protection, and favor, it is his encounters with angels at different stages of his life. If Jacob had faced life only on his own, he may never have thrived. Let us pray. I am grateful, my Lord and my God, for your presence in my life. Thank you for also sending angels to be on assignment for me and to minister help to me every time that I need it, just like you did for Jacob. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I will not miss my angelic encounters, whether I am aware of who they are or not. Amen.